Welcome back guys so this is going to be a beginner's guide video to RPCSC PlayStation 3 emulator for Windows. It is a multi-platform open source emulator available on different platforms like Windows, Linux, Mac OS and FreeBSD. In this video I'll be showing you how to set it up on Windows. My PC has Ryzen 3700X processor and an RTX 2070 Super GPU. We'll also be showing you how to download the patches, create save states and from where to find settings for any particular game. First let me just show you its system requirements. These are the minimum and the recommended system requirements. Quick start guide is available on RPCSC's website. A quad core processor is the bare minimum requirement for running this emulator. Stability in some games can be an issue with only 4 cores available. As for the recommended system requirements, at least a hexa core processor is recommended. Having more cores will help in improving the performance. Here AMD Zen 2 architecture or newer is mentioned. When it comes to Intel, Intel Skylake architecture or newer is recommended. Meeting the recommended system requirements does not mean all of the games will be running smoothly on your system. This is emulation after all. Some games will run slowly irrespective of the hardware or may just have graphical bugs. Good thing that RPCS3 has a compatibility list available on their website. Let me just show you that. Here the games are sorted alphabetically. A lot of games are actually in the playable list. Games that are marked as playable can be completed with playable performance and no game breaking glitches. In some cases games that are marked as in-game can be completed from start to the finish if your PC has a very powerful processor. For example games like God of War Part 3, Last of Us, they can be completed with the help of patches. Both of them are not marked as playable as the hardware requirement for running these games smoothly is on the higher side. Now you must be wondering from where to get the settings for any particular game. In this video I will be showing you some gameplay of God of War 3. In order to get settings for that game, just open Google, type in the name of the game and then type RPCS3 wiki page. This will open the RPCS3 wiki page for that game. As you can see this is the wiki page for God of War 3. And these are the settings. Under configuration section it's mentioned only option that deviate from default configuration to ensure best performance are listed below. The full list of default options is available here. Under known issues it is mentioned this title is currently not considered playable as the hardware requirement is too high but it can be played from start to finish with decent performance on a good CPU especially if you use the game's patches. I will be showing you how to apply the patches. My system has Ryzen 3700X processor. It is not the fastest processor by today's standards but it is able to run the game in a playable state. Let me just show you the CPU tier list for this emulator. I found this CPU tier list on RPCSC subreddit page. It's a bit outdated but will give us a rough idea about the level of performance expected from different processors. S tier, absolute best, performance far above what a PlayStation 3 was ever capable of achieving. And these are the processors mentioned here. i9 processor, 12900K. I have Ryzen 3700X processor and you can see it is listed under the B tier. Good performance plays every playable title with ease may lack performance in some in-game titles. Now if your processor supports AVX 512 instruction set, make sure you enable it. You will observe an improvement in performance. Now it's time to download them later. You can download it for free from RPCSC's website. Just select your platform, Windows. In order to get it working, you also need to download the PlayStation 3 firmware file. You can get it from Sony's website. This is the website. I'll download the latest version, 4.89. So these are the two files that I downloaded. We don't need to install RPCS3. Just need to extract the contents of this RPCS3 archive file. Open it using WinRAR. These are the files you can extract them anywhere on your PC. I have created this new folder in the E drive of my PC and named it as RPCS3. I'll extract the contents of the archive file here. Just drag and drop. That's it. We can now launch RPCS3 emulator. There's the exe file. This message pops up in order to proceed. I need to check this. I have read the quick start guide. Do not show again. 
it's up to you continue there's am later you can see the specifications of your system here version of the emulator now the first thing that i am going to do is install the playstation 3 firmware just click on file here then click on install firmware navigate to the directory where you have placed the firmware file that we just downloaded there it is and that's it firmware has been installed ppus will be compiled this will take some time it has been done now i'm going to show you how to add playstation 3 games to the emulator there are two ways of doing this one way is just to add the blu-ray disc script the other way is to install the pkg game file in order to run the pkg game file you will be required to provide the rap license file that is why i'll be just adding the playstation 3 blu-ray disc script before adding the game let me just show you the game folder i own a fat playstation 3 I have installed Habib CFW on it and using that I was able to rip my own game God of War 3. Due to legal reasons I won't be giving links to any website hosting PlayStation 3 games. So now I'll just add the BD rip. Click on file then click on add games. Navigate to the directory where you have placed your game. There's God of War 3 I'll just select it. Then click on select folder. That's it you can see guys game is shown here. It is considered as in-game. Compatibility is shown right here. This is the serial code of your game. Useful when we are looking for patches. Version of the game. Now let me just show you how to open the directory where the game is placed. This is useful when you have installed a PKG game file. Just right click on the game. Then click on open install folder. It opened a directory where all of the game files are present. Now let me just show you the control setting. Just tap on pads here. This emulator supports different game pads. I'll be using a wired Xbox One controller. So I just need to select X input. As you can see keyboard is also supported. PlayStation controllers are obviously supported. After selecting your game pad just click on save here. If you want to install a PKG file, just click on file here. Then click on install packages, wraps and edats. Moving on to the settings, I just leave the global settings to default. If you want to access them, just click on configuration here. Click on any of the options available here, CPU. These are all of the settings. Instead of messing with the global settings, I tweak the per game settings. Let me just show you how to access them. Just right click on the game. Now click on create custom configuration. I'll create the configuration for God of War part 3. Now I'm going to access the RPCSC wiki page of this game. A lot of settings are available but the good thing is that we only need to tweak a few settings. You can see under CPU configuration here it is mentioned. SPU block size set to mega improves performance. Let's do this. Under SPU block size I'll just set it to mega. My processor does not support AVX512 instruction set. I can't access this setting. Moving on to the GPU setting. Here it is mentioned to set the frame limit to 60. Stops the game speeding up over 60 FPS and can reduce crashes during load screens. Resolution scale threshold set to 160 by 160. When using resolution scaling above 100% this must be set to 160 by 160 otherwise bloom will appear pixelated. Enable right color buffers required in some sections and demo version. Asynchronous texture streaming set to on improves performance. Okay. So under the GPU section, I have selected Vulkan as the render. You will be getting better performance in most of the games using Vulkan as compared to OpenGL. Aspect ratio set to 16 is to 9 frame limit set to 60. I'll set the anisotropic filter to 16x. I'll just disable the anti-aliasing. I'll set the resolution scale to 200%. This is the resolution 2560 by 1440 pixels. You can set it to 300%. That is 4K. This depends on your hardware. I have a full HD monitor so I am quite content with this resolution. I'll enable this setting. Asynchronous texture streaming. Right color buffer setting. And we need to set the resolution scale threshold to 160 by 160 as mentioned in the wiki page. 
don't tweak the default resolution leave it to 720p just use resolution scale for upscaling that's it with the gpu settings let's move on to the audio settings i just leave them as it is for most of the games again using default settings system settings default nothing change under the network settings advanced setting here we will be required to change the settings depending on the game for this game let me just refer to the wiki page under advanced configuration it is mentioned to set rss fifo accuracy to atomic helps with stability set the driver wake up delay to 50 required to fix crashes insignificant performance loss try 100 or 200 if it's still crashing okay let's do this there's the rsx fifo accuracy setting i'll just set it to atomic and there's the driver wake up delay need to set it to 50 here we have another important setting v blank frequency it is usually increased in steps of 2 corresponding to the in-game fps for example let's say if you want to run a game at 60 fps you may have to increase the v blank frequency value to 120 hertz now high fps can also be achieved by applying patches in this case i'll be using patches instead of increasing the v blank frequency sustaining the high fps entirely depends on your pc's hardware then we have the emulator settings here i'll enable the performance overlay i'll also enable this setting start games in full screen mode apply all of these settings this emulator also has a hidden debug tab let me just show you how to activate it just open the root directory of rpcst emulator then open gui configs folder then open this file current settings using notepad you can use any text editor here under the meta section find this text line show debug tab by default it is set to false just change it to true before doing this make sure you have closed the rpc stream later i forgot to close it then just save the change open them later again access the settings you can see debug tab is now available for this game i'll just leave the settings as this default now i'm going to show you how to apply the patches make sure you remember the serial code and version of the game click on manage here then click on game patches it's completely blank here this message popped up new patches are available do you want to update just make sure your system is connected to internet yes patches for all of the games have been downloaded just look for the game that you are trying to run there's code over 3 expanded and match the serial code and also the version of the game this is the version of the game that i'll be running and these are the patches available for this game i'll just enable some of them description has been provided here i enable this patch disable bloom disable some not all bloom effects speed boost for this game it is recommended you disable mlaa this will help in improving the performance by a lot i'll also enable this skip any videos with x button that's it apply for this game you can also unlock the fps if you want to go higher than 60 fps this is its description unlocks internal time step calculation increase v blank frequency to match your desired frame rate i just told you about this earlier i won't be using this patch my system is not that powerful so apply and save 